Welcome to our virtual worship. We invite you to tune in and to invite family members. Maybe you could even do a watch party on Facebook Live. But welcome to this day. This is the day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're not about social distancing because we want you to be social online and be safe. We're about physical distancing. But today I'll call to worship. God calls us from the valley of dry bones. Come, listen for a word from our God. We hear God calling us in a far distant voice. We had nearly forgotten God cares for us. The Spirit breathes life into our dry bones. God offers hope when we have lost our way. Our souls wait for the refreshment that God offers. Our spirits are filled with great expectation. Christ came as the light to all in this world. Christ comes among us today as our light today, as he lights our paths. We hear the teacher calling for us. Christ unbinds us that we may see and believe. Let us pray. Most Gracious and loving God, we come on this, the Lord's Day, on this fifth Sunday of Lent. We ask for your steadfast love. Bring us new life to this new community of your people as we worship in different ways. We cannot gather in your house, but we know that we are your temple. And we are eager to hear your voice. Fill us with your spirit. Come from the four winds, O oh breath. Bring vitality and purpose to our gathering. That we may energize and encourage one another. Hear our voices in various places. Lift it in praise as we cry out to you for our need. Be attentive of our supplications, lest we die apart from you. Only you can unbind us. Only you can free us. We thank you today for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Now let us prepare for our scripture reading by Minister Scott. Our scripture reading this morning will come from the book of Mark. And this morning I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. We'll be reading Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. And it reads, Hear the word of the Lord. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. He was already in the boat, so they started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm arose. High waves began to break into the boat until there was nearly full of water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion, frantically they woke up, shouting, Teacher, don't you even care that we're going to drown? When he woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the water, Quiet down! Suddenly the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. And he asked them, Why are you so afraid? 
Do you still not have faith in me? And they were filled with awe and said among themselves, Who is this man that even the wind and waves obey him? We read Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, New Living Translations.
been good to you? Has he been better than good to you? Did he wake you up this morning? Did he start you on your way? Do you have reasonable portion of health and strength because he's been better than good to us? So we thank our Christ crusaders as they have ministered in music. And now let us prepare for the word for today. How many have come because you want to hear a word from God on today. Today, you've already heard in your hearing our scripture reading, which is from Mark, verses 35 through 41. And I'm only going to read one verse in regards to our 
sermon for today, and the title is Trusting When Jesus Sleeps. Verse 38 reads as thus, but he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come at this appointed hour and we ask for your anointing, even in a virtual worship service. We just thank you, God, for the opportunity to be able to stand behind this sacred desk. But we just thank you and praise you because we know that preaching has no power unless your anointing comes. Anoint me afresh that I might be used by you so that someone at the end of this worship experience can come and say, what must I do to be saved? You use the example through parables to teach your disciples, teach us, even in this pandemic that the world is actually going through. Let us pay attention to listen to your spirit. Even when we feel that you don't care. Let us know that you have the power over the wind, the waves, pandemic, wayward leaders, a world that's dark. You, God, are still in control. And we thank you as we are about to open up your word, open up our minds, open up our hearts, that we may receive your word on this day. We thank you in advance for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. On this fifth Sunday of Lent, in Lent, our lesson that we're going to be examining today is how do we trust Jesus when things, when storms, when COVID-19 seems to be taking control? How does the Christian community handle trusting in Jesus? Our lifestyle and our freedoms and our plans seem to have completely been interrupted. Our gathering together, sports, entertainment, our shopping, going to work, all of these things have suddenly changed. Even how we come together in worship, all have changed. But we rely on your spirit because we know that you are still in control, even when everything else is out of control. This pandemic has caused many pastors during this time, it has caused me to sit and reflect about the breaking news. The breaking news that seems to be flooding the airways, and our spirit. Many people, because of the breaking news now, is fearful and afraid. We're afraid to be in contact. We're afraid to live life. We grow impatient in our fears. And if we're honest, we ask the question as the disciples even asked Jesus, Jesus, do you not care that we are perishing? All over the world we see that the angel of death is all about. And the Christian community can even ask the same question, Jesus, do you not care? Well, there is a word from the Lord on today. One, we have to remember what Jesus said in this scripture. He's in the boat already and he invites us in. Are you willing to come in the boat with Jesus? Jesus says, let us cross to the other side of the lake. Which means, and it indicates that, that we are going to get to the other side. Why? Because Jesus never breaks his promises. So let us see while Jesus is resting after teaching through parables about one, four types of soil, 
Two, explaining the types of soil. Three, the parables about growing seeds. Then the parable of the mustard seed and our faith. All of this is happening as we examine Mark, the fourth chapter. And now we come to the point where Jesus has worked hard all day long. And now it is evening. Jesus was already on the boat. He invites his disciples in to take an evening cruise. Just imagine Jesus inviting you to an evening cruise with him. I would imagine that it would be one that we would welcome and one that we would jump into the boat just so that we can be close to Jesus. But Jesus knows that after teaching all day long and, and, and spilling out and, and giving and feeding the word to the crowds, that Jesus, the physical man, had to take a pause. Well, let's pause right there for a moment. COVID-19 has caused the world to take a pause. Many times there are little nuggets in scripture that we can actually take and follow Jesus' example. After we have been in the crowds for so long without even thinking about rest, Jesus always went to a certain place. Jesus went to his closet. He went to be with his father to reconnect, to re-energize. Are we taking a pause in this pandemic? Are we staying at home? Are we staying safe? Because we know that Jesus has power, but even Jesus took a pause to rest. Are we taking advantage of this resting with Jesus during this time? Are we physically distancing? You know, there's a word now that if you go on Google and you see what's trending, social distancing besides COVID-19 is probably on the top of the list. But God doesn't want us who are made to be social to not be social with one another. It just means we have to be innovative how we are social with one another. You know, there is something called the phone. It's not just for scrolling up and down or swiping right and left. It's actually a phone that you can actually pick up Dial those numbers or keypad and reach out and touch someone by your voice. There are many ways that we can actually socially interact with each other. We can Zoom, we can ring central, there's Google uh, meeting or gathering. There's so many different ways that we can actually gather to see how we are doing. But in this boat situation, in this pandemic, the world is in the boat. But now it is time for us to be light in this world that has lost its savor. It has lost a desire to even be with Jesus. It has forced us to get away from the crowd. Do you see how this scripture is lining up with where, how we live our lives now? Jesus was getting away from the crowd. He was taking advantage of resting. He invites his disciples. And because they are on the lake, sometimes things get out of control. Now, even Jesus and his disciples were getting away, according to the Bible. They were in the boats. But see, the crowd doesn't always let you get away. You may get a call from a friend, and somebody might be inviting you to come and gather. 
Even though the malls and all the stores except for the supermarkets are closed, there may be gatherings in the park. There may be gatherings on the outside. So Jesus, even in this example, is showing that as he and his disciples were going to the other side of the lake, there were other boats that were going to follow. Sometime, we have to take a pause, even when the crowd is trying to draw us back in. We have to take example and advantage of resting with Jesus. Why are we upset that things seem to be out of control? One is because we like to be in control. A lot of times we get frantic because we're not in control. Well, right now we need to learn what it looks like to trust in Jesus. Now we even have to do as the disciples were doing. They were trying to get away. They were trying to go on the other side because Jesus invited them to go. But then it says in the scriptures that it was evening, nighttime on the lake. See, nighttime in the middle of a lake or water is sometimes a scary time. One, if the moon is hidden by the clouds, there is no light. You're in complete darkness. Just imagine those disciples in the boat, crossing over to the other side, and a storm arises. See, when a storm arises, that means there's going to be clouds, there's going to be wind, and we know that there were waves. And as the boat in the middle of the night, in the middle of the darkness, there is waves crashing in. They can't see their way. And they start to get frantic because now these fishermen who are not unfamiliar with storms and boat rides are now getting frantic. But why are they getting frantic? Because this is a storm like no other storm. This is a time that even with Jesus in their midst, they forget that Jesus is in the boat with them and they take their attention and put it on the storm. Well, is that not what we're doing with all this breaking news? Are we actually now taking our eye off Jesus and putting it on the COVID-19 and all the reports and all of the things that, that they keep telling us? And we lose sight and forget that Jesus is in the same situation with us. See, we have to sometimes pause and say, Jesus even when things are out of control, I remember that you are Emmanuel in my life. You are still with me. It doesn't matter whether or not I have control of my situation or control of this vehicle or control of this boat. I don't have control of my work situations. I don't have control of even being able to buy toilet tissue. Now, I still don't get that one. but. Let's get back to the scripture. We get upset when things are out of our control. We get frantic because our busy lives and our plans have now been confined to our houses, our apartments, and the condos. Even though Jesus is in the boat with us, when we lose control, we lose focus. When we lose focus, sometimes we lose hope. But I'm here to tell you that there's good news. Because even though those disciples were frantic, and even though the boat was getting wave after wave, see, the waves were about to sink the boat. So they were frantic that they were going to perish before they got to the other side. One, because they forgot what Jesus said. Do we forget what Jesus says when the waves 
of the breaking news, when the waves flood our airways, when the waves flood our spirits, do we react like the disciples did? See, we can't really get that upset with them. This is not just a story. This is what we are in right now. We're in the waves of life where the winds and the storms are rocking us. There's a certain amount of uncertainty because things are out of our control. But see, this is just a test. We grow weary in the test of life. And sometimes we ask the question when we are overwhelmed. Jesus, what are you doing in my situation? See, we always think that every time we cry out that Jesus is supposed to be Johnny on the spot. But one thing that is the good news is he may not come when you want him, but he comes right on time. See, that's the God that we serve. And in this situation, Jesus is say, sleeping. Now, can you imagine you're on the boat, the waves are flooding the boat, and Jesus is in the back of the boat. In the back, on a cushion, getting some rest. He's not upset by the waves. He's not upset that his disciples are crying out. He's showing the disciples how to have peace in the midst of the storm. Aren't you glad that we have a God that when we are afraid and when we are fearful and when we're drowning and when we feel that things are out of control, we have a God that knows how to take control. Not only does God take control of the midnight wave and the midnight storm, but Jesus just gets up and rebukes that storm and says, peace, be still. Can you allow Jesus to speak peace in the midst of the storm? Now in this particular pericope, yes, the storm, the winds immediately calm. And because the winds calm, so does the waves. How about if we, the Christian community, show that we have peace to those that seem to be running frantic, those that are afraid, those that know and love misery? Even in the household of faith, misery loves company. But if you become the company, do you succumb to the fear? Or do you bring peace in the misery? Well, the choice is up to you. We have to know that we have a teacher that even when we feel that he doesn't care, we have to have a certain level of faith to know that even if I don't feel Jesus, even if he has an answer to my immediate cry, my faith is not going to fail because I know that he did it before and he can do it again. Aren't you glad that we serve a Jesus that is not bothered by the storm of COVID? He's not bothered by the storms of life. He's not bothered by the winds that seem to drown us. But we have a God that cares even when we say, do you not care, Jesus? He doesn't take offense with our drama. Because we have a God that even when we question his compassion, he doesn't take offense because he knows our frame. He knows our situation because he's in the boat with us. But we have to remember that the devil might try to make you think he doesn't care about our situations. Our questions are valid because of our feelings and our emotions. 
But Jesus is trying to remind us in this storm, don't let your emotions take control over you because that's where the enemy realm is. He's always around the corner to try to whisper in our ear, Jesus doesn't care, look at your situation. And when you spend time listening to that voice, you don't have time to hear Jesus rebuke the storm, rebuke what the devil is trying to put fear in our lives. We have a God that can rebuke the devil. We have a God that has him under control. He has control of this storm. And he says, hush, be still. Aren't you glad that God can say, be still and muzzle that devil? Peace, be still. Jesus speaks peace in our situation. He can speak peace in any and every storm that arises in our lives. Then after Jesus addresses the immediate storm that caused the fear of these fishermen, Jesus then shows his compassion and love towards his disciples. He says to his disciples, why are you afraid? So Jesus even validates our fears and what makes us afraid. When Jesus asks the question, is not because he doesn't know. He wants to bring back and refocus our attention of what has taken control of our lives and ask us, why? Do you still not have faith? Now, Jesus is not saying that you are vo devoid of faith. What he is saying is that your faith is now diminishing because you're losing hope in him. He calls us to say, do you not have confidence in me? I'm right here with you. Sometime our faith is tested in times of uncertainty. When things are out of our control, we have to remember, but God. Do you have a but God is still in control when God reminds you and asks you the question, what are you afraid of? The disciples started to think after Jesus calmed their, for, for their fears and they were still, and they know that God now got it. He is in control and he's taking the wheel by just asking us a question, what are you afraid of? See, sometimes when we read the scripture and we hear the words of Jesus say, peace, be still, we need to sometime rest when Jesus is sleeping. If he's sleeping, then we must be going to get to the other side. If Jesus is with us, we're not going to perish because we believe by faith that he already has saved us. He has redeemed us. He has already done the work on the cross for us. So even when things are out of our control, God is in control. And when we rest on the cushion, when the storm is raging, these disciples said, who is this man that even the winds and the waves obey him? There are certain things in our lives that happen because God wants us to see him in awe and wonder. He wants us to experience his power. He wants us to see that God can handle any situation. He can handle this COVID virus. He can handle the stock markets. He can handle anything. Is there anything too hard for God? God is handling us over 2,000 years ago when he was on the cross. As we are approaching Passion Week, 
as we are approaching what makes us Christian in Resurrection Sunday. Jesus, over 2,000 years ago, when it seemed that all hope was lost, they had looked for the Messiah and they had shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, because they were looking for God and Jesus to overturn the oppressor, to overturn those that keep us bound and those that have control over us, have control of our money, have control of our life, and they were control of being slaved by the Roman government. And it seemed that all hope was lost, and Jesus said it is finished on the cross. We have to remember that just as he was sleeping on a cushion in the boat, Jesus was sleeping in a borrowed tomb. <laughs> See, we have to know that he had to sleep in a borrowed tomb because when he rested there, he was not there to stay. Because on that third day, he got up with all power in his hand, the power to save, the power to speak peace in our storm, the power to give us hope. That's the God that we serve. When all hope was lost three days ago, on Sunday morning, he got up to save us, to calm us, to take control of our problems and our situations. We have to trust in God no matter what is going on in our lives. Lean and trust in the Lord. Trusting in Jesus when he sleeps. There's a familiar hymn that we used to sing. And sometimes we still sing. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I'm going to treat everybody right until I die. I'm going to stay on that battlefield until I die. Are you willing to stay in the battle because Jesus is with us? Are you going to stay on bended knee because Jesus is with us? That hymn is trying to tell us, don't give up hope because if we die in the Lord, we don't have to fear death today. That is the message that we have to tell others that I will trust in the Lord until I die. Are you trusting in the Lord? We thank you for dialing in to our St. Mary's live virtual service. But as with any service that we have, if you have tuned into our service and we thank you for tuning in, we ask you to ask yourself, what makes me afraid? What has caused me to take focus off of Jesus? We offer you Jesus today. Even though you're not able to come to the physical building, you can still come to God. God arms and the doors of the church never close. These physical doors may close, but God's heart is always open to those that are seeking him. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and God will add everything else that you need. If you need peace today, come to Jesus. If you need salvation today, come to Jesus. Jesus died and reconciled the world to himself over 2,000 years ago. And even in a time such as these, it's never too late to come to Jesus. If you would bow your heads with me and say, Lord, take away my fear. Speak peace into my situation. We are mourning the death that are going on all over the world and we ask for comfort to those families. Comfort to all that may be transitioning out of this life. But because I can see this service, because I have tuned in today, 
I asked you to come into my life, come into my boat, come into my situation, relieve and speak peace so I can stand still and know the salvation of the Lord. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me because I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I believe that you died and rose again for my sins. If you believe that, then today you have just given your life to Christ. But after you give your life to Christ, it's not enough just to be saved. But now because you are saved, you have to find a Bible teaching church. Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. Far too often do people think that, that they don't want to be religious. Well, let me tell you something about religion. God says, I died for a relationship. He wants a relationship and a closer walk with you. He doesn't expect you to be perfect because if you're perfect before you come to him, then why do you need Jesus? But Jesus says, come with your imperfections. Come as you are. Come to Jesus. He wants to be with you. We want to embrace you. If you want to join us even virtually and you want to be included in our Bible studies, join St. Mary's and send us your emails. Join us by email and we will include you in our services. Because Jesus wants to walk with you. We want to walk with you. We want to teach and show you how to read the Bible, how to be a disciple, how to walk until we transition from this life. Because we're not here to stay. But God has made us a promise. Come to the other side. He has built many mansions, and if it were not so, he wouldn't have told us. We thank you for joining and tuning in. Watch for our next services. You'll get a notification if you like our webpage. Now we have the time for virtual giving. Virtual giving is a time that, that we worship with that which God has entrusted to us. We bring not only our lives, but we bring an offering to God. In these times, we need to still worship God by bringing something when we worship. You're going to see on our webpage, you might even see on this program on how to worship by giving. So as we prepare for the benediction, we thank you again for tuning in. Let us bow our heads and prepare for our benediction, never from your presence, Lord, but just from this worship experience. Lord, we thank thee for being in the boat. We thank you for being in our situation. We thank you, God, for caring even when we ask you a question, do you not care? Not only do you care, but you have done something about it and you gave your life a ransom for many. Once to die, but you rose again so that we all can live. Even when we transition from this life is not death, but just transition into eternal life. Let us be hope in a world that's hopeless. Let us be peace when people are frantic and out of control. Let us be that light in a world that's in darkness. We thank you, God, for all that you are doing and all that you will do. And we certainly thank you for what you have done to bring us thus far. We pray this prayer and benediction in Jesus' name. Can you say Jesus? We thank you, Jesus, because you are in this situation with us. Emmanuel, we bless you. We're in awe of you. 
We pay attention to how you're going to move even in this storm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen.